Getting to know Jack Kennedy. Please join us in listening to the remarkable story from the life and times of Michael Butler. In this podcast series, you'll be hearing stories from the primary themes of Michael Butler's life and memoirs. Politics, polo, theater, and love. Please subscribe via iTunes so you don't miss a single podcast. And we'll see you on the other side. John F. Kennedy, I never... uh called him John. I always called him Jack, and I think most people who knew him called him Jack. After meeting Jack uh, in Palm Beach, our next meeting was in the south of France at a place called Cap d'Antibes, and the program was that I was going to sail up, have luncheon with Jack and the Shah of Iran. I had chartered the Hennessy sailing yacht and was taking it out of Cannes and sailing up to Antibes. Luncheon with the Shah and his Empress Soroya was uh, purely a social event. The plan was that Jack was going to bring a lady and I would be with a friend that I was spending time with in those days, and we would go sailing around the nearby islands in the Mediterranean. Well, I arrived late, missed the luncheon with the Shah, and Jack's lady friend did not show up, so the three of us took off and sailed Corsica, Sardinia, those areas, went over to some of the other islands, uh, and had a, a, a wonderful time. But Jack was on crutches in those days. He'd had some form of back operation. I never asked or got into the details of what it was about, but he was pretty active and was able to get around the schooner pretty well. When we returned to Antibes, why, we then spent a day or so on the large power yacht of Bernard Grivole. Grivole was one of the great wine men of France. Uh, he owned Montrachet, had a great chateau in Dijon. In fact, there's another story about my spending time with him in Dijon for a future day. At this time, I was getting deeply into Catholicism. I had never been baptized in any religion, and uh, mainly due to the influence of Tyrone Power, why I decided I really wanted to become a Catholic. So I asked Jack before I left uh, south of France uh, if he could give me any advice or help on this matter. Uh, Jack said, well, the best thing to do as you're going back to Chicago, is to contact my sister Eunice and see if she could help you there. So I contacted Eunice when I got back to Chicago, and she, with her husband, Sergeant Shriver, who was running the Merchandise Mart, which at that time was owned by the Kennedy family, uh, the two of them were very helpful got me a confessor and a monsignor who taught me about Catholicism. When I returned to New York, Jack was mostly in Washington, uh, but also spending a fair amount of time in New York. And we started spending some time hitting uh, some of the pubs and seeing who was an attractive lady at the moment. Our favorites area was it. Houston Street. Some people call it Houston, but in New York it's pronounced Houston Street. And at that time, Houston Street was sort of the the border between downtown and uptown. It was a pretty libertine area and a lot of fun. One night in particular, Jack, who usually wore 
dark glasses, was spotted by somebody who knew him, and he immediately struck up a conversation, and these two disappeared, leaving me alone in this bar. I wound up teaming up with two ladies who took me off to a Central Park West apartment, quite an apartment, and where I spent the weekend uh, with the two of them was also introduced to cocaine, which was quite an experience I will never forget. About this time, I had acquired the Corradina, which was a quite a large uh, sailing schooner, and uh, I used to enjoy sailing with uh, Jack and other friends. Interesting thing about the Corradina is it was a heavy gaff rig schooner. It had really been built in Germany for the North Sea trade and, uh, to be used as a schooner in that area. Due to its rigging, the ship would go out when there was small craft warnings, and that was when we sailed the best with the heavy rigging that we had. Jack always got a kick out of that, was when the smaller boats were running for cover, we would be out sailing along. Our last experience uh, together on the Corradina was I picked him up at Bailey's Beach, a very famous private club in Rhode Island, part, one might say, of Newport. And I had to go in with a tender uh, and jump out into the water to my uh, knees almost. Uh, and Jack came aboard, <laughs> also wet. And we spent the day sailing, winding up that evening at the port of Newport and had a very pleasant time together. The next podcast will be about the change in our relationship, which became one of seriousness when Jack, as a senator, really wanted some information out of the Middle East. Please subscribe via iTunes so you don't miss a single podcast. And we'll see you on the other side.